Welcome to Team Help Desk for Outlook. In this demonstration, we will explore some automation features available in Team Help Desk, such as using a dedicated common mailbox account, automatic generation of support cases, and dynamic assignment of default help desk fields on the fly. If there are multiple technicians working on their assigned support cases, by default, Team Help Desk will use the primary mailbox account to send out response and other automated email notifications. The problem is when the caller replies back, it will be addressed to the technician mail account. This means each technician had to manually process and associate the incoming emails to the correct support case. If the technician is absent or on leave, the replies will be stuck at the technician's mailbox with no other technician able to attend to that caller. Therefore, this can be a cumbersome and inefficient process and support cases can fall into the cracks. To overcome this limitation, Team Help Desk can be configured to send out any technician's responses and automated notifications from a common mailbox account say, support at your company.com. It is a good practice to maintain such common account where callers can send support cases into the help desk directly. To feed a dedicated mailbox account for outgoing emails, open the advanced options settings. Here, you can specify the mailbox from the global address list. You also need to make sure all help desk technicians have send on behalf rights over this common mailbox account. You can do that from the Active Directory tool and your Windows server. Select the common account, right click it, and go to Properties and Exchange General tab. And click the Delivery options. Now, add each technician to this box to grant send on behalf permission. Now, save. From now onwards, Team Help Desk will use this common email account in the from field of any outgoing emails. To test, let us make a reply to the recent email received from this caller. Here, you can see the from field now takes the common account. This means, when the caller replies back to this email, it will be sent to the common account. Now, let us explore the automatic generation of support cases from incoming emails. To set up this feature, open the email monitoring settings. Here, the manager can set Team Help Desk to monitor any number of exchange mailboxes and mail enabled public folders and perform the auto generation of support cases from the incoming emails. For this demonstration, let me add the support mailbox account. All help desk managers need to have full mailbox access permission over this account. This can be set under the Active Directory. For example, go to the properties of the mailbox account, Exchange Advanced tab, and click Mailbox Rights. Here, you need to grant full access permission over this mailbox to all help desk managers. if granting permission to each manager is cumbersome and time-consuming. Then it is advisable that you create a domain group whose members consist of all help desk managers. For example, here, the group service desk is granted full control. This way, you can easily grant permission to that whole group in a single step. I will go ahead and add a mail-enabled public folder to such that Team Help Desk can monitor it for incoming emails. It is important that all Help Desk managers have editor or publishing editor rights over the monitored public folder.
Otherwise, this automation feature won't work. Now, Team Help Desk is ready to intercept incoming emails to this mailbox and to automatically generate support cases. Let us try sending some sample test emails to the mailbox. As you can see, Team Help Desk now automatically processes incoming emails to generate support case item in Outlook. It also sent out the notification emails on the case to the caller. If you enable this option, Team Help Desk will monitor the ongoing cases folder such that any new incoming emails to this folder will be automatically processed to generate support cases. Let us try sending an email to the ongoing cases folder and see what happens. You can also drag emails from other source to this folder for the automation to trigger. With this kind of setup, the managers are freed from having to monitor inbox manually every now and then. This way, all support submissions are captured and centralized in order to execute efficient and effective customer service. Now, let us explore how we can perform default assignment of technician, problem category, and service level on automatically generated support cases. Earlier, I have chosen our support mailbox to be monitored by Team Help Desk. Now, I want all support cases that are generated from this mailbox to be assigned automatically to our technical consultant, Francis. This is simply done by selecting a value from the corresponding drop-down list. I also want the generated case to belong to technical problem category and hardware problem type. I can also specify a default service level from this drop down, which can influence the due date to resolve this case based on the service level specification. Similarly, here is another mailbox that we use for sales support. And I want all support cases generated from this mailbox to be assigned to our sales manager, Monica, by default. And I want the generated cases to belong to sales problem category and general problem type. Now, let us save the settings and test by sending an email to the support and sales mailboxes. As you can see, Team Help Desk automatically assigns Francis as the technician, and accordingly, a notification email of case assignment has been sent to Francis and to the caller automatically. The problem category and type fields are also populated based on our earlier settings of the sales mailbox. Notice that the due date is also set automatically according to the assigned service level. Let us now try sending an email to the sales mailbox. As expected, the generated case has been assigned to Monica and problem category is set to sales and type to general. So, we have seen that you can associate a problem category, problem type, 
technician, and service level with each monitored folder or mailbox, such that support case generated from this mailbox or folder will have those associated parameters automatically assigned. As a consequence of this dynamic assignment, Team Help Desk will send out notification emails and SMS to the assigned technician automatically. This automation allows Help Desk managers to get rid of manual assignment, and thus helping to improve the efficiency and response time of your Help Desk team. You can also deactivate the automatic processing of a particular folder or mailbox without needing to remove it from the list. This may prove useful in circumstances where the mailbox or the folder needs to be disabled temporarily. If you have multiple users with Team Help Desk Manager installed, responsibility of monitoring the mailboxes and folders would be borne by different users by default. Here, you can easily know who is currently monitoring a particular mailbox or folder from this last column. Now, let us try some other advanced automation features. If you enable this option, Team Help Desk will automatically add a new appointment into the assigned technician's mailbox calendar when a due date is specified on a support case. For example, here I have this support case 23. It is assigned to John Nash. If I change the due date, say, the 4th of April, 2011, 5 p.m., and I will save this case. Now, let us go to the mailbox calendar of John Nash and switch to the 4th of April day view. As you can see, a new appointment, having the title of the support case and case number is created. The presence of the case number and the title of the assigned case in the appointment subject differentiates it from other personal appointments. If you open this due date appointment, you will find the due date of the case is the same as that of the start time and end time of the appointment. There is also a link to the actual case, clicking which would open the case from the Team Help Desk ongoing cases folder. The appointment also contains this description that informs the technician about the caller and a summary of the problem. If I go back to the Manager Outlook and update the due date, say, 6 p.m., Team Help Desk will also update the due date appointment entry in John's calendar. When the due date appointments are about to be overdue, Outlook automatically displays reminders pop up to the technician. One another thing to notice here is this due date appointment appears in summarized form on the main Outlook Today page when the technician starts Outlook. This way, the technician is alerted about the pending cases which need their attention. This due date appointment is removed automatically when the associated support case is closed. Enabling this option also allows help desk managers to look up the assigned technician's personal calendar from within the support case in Outlook. This enables the help desk manager to assign a particular due date on which the technician is available to work on the case. This, of course, requires that the manager have permission to access the technician's mailbox. Similarly, enabling this option would allow Team Help Desk to add a task into the technician's mailbox when the Help Desk manager set a due date on a support case. Now to the Service Level Agreement feature implemented in Team Help Desk. Team Help Desk allows managers to set and maintain service level agreement standards in the organization. In this Service Level Agreement Manager panel, you can compile a list of service levels. The first field takes the name of the service level. The second field is the priority of the case, and it can take one of these three values, low, normal, and high, as available in Outlook. The third field is the response time, and can take one of values, starting with an hour, two days, weeks, or month. I can also specify supervisors 
who would be notified when an assigned technician breaches the service level agreement. Let us now see how to enforce a service level. In this support case, the service level dropdowns contains all the service level agreements that we had to find some time ago. Selecting a value would prompt me if to enforce the particular service level. When a service level is enforced to a support case, the due date of the case automatically adheres to the specified response time of the service level. The importance field of the case also gets affected as per the specified priority level of the service level. If the case is not fulfilled within the response time, a service level breach would occur, which would in turn send escalation emails or SMS to the supervisors. This is how a service level agreement breach notification to supervisors would look like. This prevents any issue or request from ever falling through the cracks and allows help desk managers and technicians to effectively stay on top of any support cases approaching the breach of a service level agreement. With this, we conclude this video demonstration on advanced automation features in Team Help Desk for Outlook.